tissues. In terms of study for the tissues, you should know the different shapes. Like what if I gave you a question that said, which tissue is characterized by one layer of cells that tend to be equal in width and length? Simple cuboidal, very good. So the, you should know these description, and I think you probably do, right? Which one usually has, um, it's not the only one, but which one is characterized by goblet cells? Columnar. Pseudostratified, yeah, columnar. Okay, in terms of the tables, you know much of this, this um, of this chapter is organized in tables. No, I, I, I can't even read all that. That's too much, right? Yeah. Just know location and function. So if something is stratified in squamous, what is its function? Stra <laughs> Stratified squamous, Stratified protection. Squamous. Lots of layers. So lots of layers means it's going to give you lots of protection. protection. Okay? So you're going to find it in areas, where would you find stratified squamous? Skin. 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 Esophagus. <laughs> Mouth. Why are you giggling? Because everyone says skin and then they like stop. Everyone's like skin and they're very confident and then after that they're like, nope. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Anyway, so anywhere, you know, uh, rectum, anywhere where it's like harsh environment. Okay. Single, like look at simple squamous. What, what do you think it's, don't look at the answer, but what do you think that, that's almost like saying, you know that your brain also, when somebody tells you not to do something, you don't hear the not in the beginning? I just told you, look at the answer, because that's all you heard, right? So you looked at the answer. What is the function of simple squamous? Movement, right? Things can move across it, because it's one cell layer, so they're going to diffuse. Remember all those cell transport? Unfortunately, I think I told you in week one, you could not dump any of the information we learned from week one. It just keeps building, right? Like a bad set of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Like <laughs> All right. So for tissue chapter, make sure you know location and function. I will not ask you to the extent here, like, I know that, and you will know eventually, that the glomerular capsule in the kidneys is where we have simple squamous. You just have to know it, like, where would you expect? Where do we have exchange at? Lungs, good, Edsel. Lungs, where else? I'm ignoring intestines because it's in a harsh environment in there, and I want it much thicker than simple squamous or in your big trouble. Where else do you have it? You have it in the liver. The liver. You have it in the kidneys where we filter. So where you don't need as much protection. What would you have? You're right, there's movement in the intestines, but what kind of epithelium? A simple one. Columnar. Where you're going to have movement, but the environment is harsh. The it's going to be more column-shaped cells. You remember that? So if you just remember, don't just memorize is my point. Sometimes you have to think of this in how it makes sense. So you're right in that there's movement in the small intestines. Your body's absorbing a lot of stuff. But that is like an awful environment in there. Imagine if you lived in your intestines. It's like living in a sewer. Okay? You could move through those pipes, but you would need some protection between the inside and outside of that environment. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so that's chapter four. Chapter five is your integumentary. You know, your lecture outline is a really good guide. There's a lot of stuff on there. So make sure that you know the layers of the epidermis in the right order. Make sure you know those specialized cells like... Um, what layer is the melanocyte in? Stratovasal. What's what um, layer is the Langerhans cell associated with? Stratum spinosum. Yes, yeah, stratum spinosum. Okay, so make certain you know those. What are the layers of the dermis? What's the the top layer of the dermis? Corneum. What's it called? Papillary. What kind of tissue is in the papillary layer of the dermis? Areolar. What is the layer below the papillary? Reticular. What kind of tissue is in there? 
Dents irregular. Very good, Christina. Dents irregular. So if you are not recalling this, this is a probably a good thing to go back and revisit. Know the different glands. Remember we talked about apocrine versus eccrine glands? Make sure you know the difference. What structure is the sebaceous gland associated with? The hair follicle, okay. Make sure you know the different pigments. How many different pigments did we talk about? Three. Make sure you know what color they give your skin. You don't have to know this, the structure of hair and nails. Like all, You don't have to know those layers. You don't have to know about nails at all. You should know the functions of skin. And you should know, remember we talked about malignancy in moles, the difference between a normal versus an abnormal one? Know the degrees, what layers are impacted in first, second, and third degree burns, and what the characteristics. And I'll not have you do any calculations, but it's good to know that they use the 9% rule to calculate percentage of burn areas. Okay? Questions? Comments? All right, skeletal system. Make sure that you know the functions of the bone. You know we talked about classification, remember? The different types, and we talked a little bit about it today. Know the parts of a long bone. We keep talking about that. Uh, know the microscopic anatomy. What does an osteon look like, and what are the structures in there? What is the difference between spongy and compact bone? Know the cells, right? Which three are related? The osteogenic gives rise to what? Blast. The blast. What do the blasts do? Blast. They build the matrix. And then once they're surrounded by matrix, what do they become? Osteocytes. Osteocytes. What is the feature on the osteocyte that allows communication between the different layers of lamella? What's it called? Canonicula. Very good. Why does the osteoclast have so many nuclei? It's a ton of white blood cells aggregated together. What were those white blood cells? Monocytes, right? Okay, make sure you know the two different types of ossification, intramembranous versus endochondral, and the different steps in which bones arise from these steps. Okay? Make sure you know the four different steps in bone repair and all the different fractures we talked about today. Know the hormones that play a part in bone remodeling. What are they? Parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. All right, and make sure you know which bones are part of axial and which bones are part of the appendicular. How many ribs do you have? Five or two, because you have two sides to your body. How many ribs do you have? Twenty-four. Okay. What bones? Make up your facial features. Mandible, sure, without a jaw. Look at what's his name that just died. He didn't have a jaw. He didn't have a mandible. I don't know, was he Siskel or Ebert? Which one? Ebert, it was Ebert. Roger Ebert, yes. He had um, mandibular cancer. And so they had removed all of his lower jaw, and you could see his whole face had sunk in. And he lived a long time like that, but it affected his, oh, maybe it was throat cancer he had, right? It was throat cancer. And it spread to his, yeah, and, they, and he lost his ability to talk. Anyway, it gravely affected his, his facial configuration. So all of the bones that make up your facial features are your mandible, your maxilla, 
the bones of your nasal concha, your nasal bones. What's this little uh, purple one here on the side? Lacrimal. It's the, where the tear ducts go through. Lacrimal. And then your frontal. What's this bone that makes up the sides of your cheek? Zygomatic bone. Okay. So those are, make sure you know the bones that make up your facial features. How many skull bones do you have in your entirety? Eight. Eight. Very good. Never said that. Right now. You're fast right now. Fast reflexes. Okay. Um, know the difference between true, false, and floaty. Know the different curvatures that we talked about in lecture. Know the different features of the different vertebrae, like not ID, but like if I said, how could you tell a cervical vertebrae from the rest? How would you be able to? What? The transverse, the transverse foramen. Uh huh. What, a, what other feature could you use? That's the best one, but what's another one you could use? Bifid spinous. Very good, the bifid spinous process. So it won't be ID, but there could be characteristic features that you should just be aware of that we talked about. Um, I think that's it. I'm not going to ask you anything specific about the appendages of the bone like what articulates with what because we haven't gone over that, but that will just be on your lab test. Okay? I think in the 80s. I think 80 something. Five, three, that's the number. Okay, any questions? Thank <laughs> you.